Ah yes, welcome. I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to our tutorial about how to make a rope leg. So we are starting out doing generation, procedural generation. Um, and so last episode we made a new function that encodes the signature of a tile into a number, into a sequence of zeros and ones, which is a binary number, which is a number. Um, and the zeros and ones represent, you know, the neighboring tiles, whether they're walkable or not. And the reason why we did it is, uh, becomes apparent today, where we are going to use this signature function to uh, recognize which walls are okay to start carving and which aren't. We're gonna do like a um, bit of a, um, we're gonna do some work. We're gonna start like um, creating, we're gonna create a function that allows us to do those comparisons. We could do to allows us to uh, compare signatures to kind of like a template that we prepared. But first of all, like last time around was just like very theoret theoretical. We just like did this get sick function, get sick. And, <laughs> and we did not, nothing else. We just like, checked if it worked, but, but in some kind of like very, mm, very weird ways. Um, so you might be asking like, okay, why did we do this? Like what, what's, what's the, the fungible result of this, of being able to do this? So maybe today I'm going to show you kind of like an example of what we can do with this. Now, let me see. Um, how did I call it? Okay, I call this like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Let's just call it worm. Uh, or maze worm. Let's call it maze worm. So maze worm is going to be our function that is responsible for carving the maze between the individual rooms. And I actually already have some ideas on how to tweak this, this, this function. So it works a little bit differently than it worked in a Mark prototype. We're going to run this maze worm here. But for now, we're not going to do much carving. We're just going to see um, like how we can apply our signature function. So um, let's do something like this. Do and I'm just going to loop through the entire map. And I just want to highlight certain tiles depending on a signature. That's something I just want to do. I just want to make them be different. Okay, so here we're looping through the entire map. We already had that before. You, I don't need to explain this. Um, and then, so we're gonna go like get sig this and this. And we're gonna go something like if. Um, so first, uh, let, let's let's do it so like like if it's m get x y equals if that is a uh, a wall. So if it's a two and get sick x y so this now we are, we're getting the signature and again it's supposed to be a number so uh, i'm gonna find all of the tiles that are surrounded completely surrounded by walls completely surrounded by walls and usually when you would do that kind of thing you would be like okay so i guess here i have to start looping through all of the surrounding tiles and then do like an if statement and maybe count how many tiles are you know doing 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 like procedure like this. But with our new signature function, it's all kind of like done very quick, very quickly. I just gonna go if this equals, and now it's gonna be um, zero B, one, 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 one. All of the tiles surrounding this, this, this tile that we're looking are, are gonna be ones. Um, they're gonna be filled and not walkable, filled with stuff, a one, true, filled, for stuffed. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like again, those four numbers represent the surrounding tiles and we go in the order of first button presses of, the, of Pico 8 because we're reusing <laughs> an array that we use for other purposes. So it's like um, right, left, up, down. That's like right, left, up, down. And then diagonally uh, in um, clockwise order. So it's like top left, uh, Top right, top uh, bottom left, right, bottom left, uh, upper right, uh, left. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I'm already struggling always with directions and now when it's flipped, it's even worse. So yeah, we'll be just comparing it to this number and then if that's the case, we're gonna set it to a, like a special tile just so we can see. 
And I'm gonna copy this. No, this we're not gonna use it forever, just like for this one specific case. Well, and I'm gonna use like this kind of like this bluish color. So what I hope now is that all of the tiles that are completely surrounded by uh, unwalkable terrain, that they will turn blue now. Just like an, to exemplify how this works. So this could be three. Okay, let's try that. Awkward. It didn't work. Oh, M said. <laughs> oh no. Oh. There we go. You see? So now with this kind of signature thing, just looping through and comparing signatures, we can pick out those parts of the map that we are kind of like interested in, in maybe carving out a little bit. And as you can see, um, this is actually a pretty good function. Like if you think about where our maze will be, where our like hallways can be, this is actually already doing a good job. So as, as in terms of where we can start doing our worming, that's great. That's already a really good, um, good place. The problem becomes only like comes in when once we start carving, we kind of still we want to be we want to have like a different kind of uh, signature we're looking for a different kind of signature um, that allows us to see if we if we can continue carving there and that's a little bit different than what we're looking for here so these are like good starting points for our worm but they're not good um, this is not a good signature for when we start carving and maybe uh, to exemplify what I mean with that is um, let me let me show you the following. Let me let me try the following here. Um, let me think about this real quick. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let let me do something like this. If is walk, we're we gonna take with walkable instead. X Y. If not, is walkable. And um, then, and we're gonna do like, okay, if it's not walkable, then if get sick, then um, m get m set and else. Um, I'm gonna, I'm doing this like this because I wanna like change the map um, and I wanna kind of like reset the colors of the walls, depending on whether they um, they're still correspond to our signature or not. So if we run this now, nothing changes. Um, it, oops, I didn't press the right button. Jeez. Um, it's not the right button still. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see now, um, you know, tiles that are far away from rooms that would, wouldn't like break into rooms or wouldn't create like awkward diagonals. Th things are still blue. And the idea is like, I'm just using this this little thing here to reset um, all, of the, um, all of the walls that do not adhere to this signature to gray in case, you know, things have changed. Because what we're doing, what we're gonna do right now is in gameplay, um, when we are bumping a wall, we're just gonna turn the tile that we bump into a, into a, a empty space. So we're gonna do something like uh, M set, um, dest x dest y and i'm gonna set it to it that's why we can be the worm <laughs> we can be the worm um so there's gonna be one right and then we're gonna do a um, um, maze worm okay so let's try to do that can we can we so we are not this is now minecraft we can now dig ourselves through by the way this could be a cool roguelike idea that you can actually like dig through um through walls so you can see as we dig through this the um the the bluish walls disappear and that's not something what that we like because then that basically our worm doesn't know how to continue. It will never actually get into the blue stuff. We want to have like some kind of signature scan, some kind of like way of um, recognizing the things that we can actually carve into uh, as we as our worm is going through through the through the through the wall. So so far, this is good for starting. As for like where is a good place to to place to start carving. But it's not not a good signature to find out what is a good place to continue carving once we are already digging into into the walls. 
very long explanation. So how are we going to do the, how are we going to create a different kind of signature that allows us to do that? Well, I did a thing. So I will destroy the illusion of this green screen by turning off the lights real quick. And now you see, oh no, there's all those wrinklies in the back. But I will show you, uh, th this is now something that you sometimes have to do manually. I have to like write something down and be like, oh, let's figure this out. So can you see this? So this is a bit of a complex thing, but basically we have four different types of walls, types of walls or signatures, or five different types of signatures that we want to be tracking here right now. There's a lot happening here. So let me explain real quick. The upper one, um, uh, this one, that's something that we're already checking against. This is already, you know, the full wall. Um, and I wrote down kind of like the signature that it is, just one, 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 one. Note that I'm separating the first four from the second four, because the first four are cardinal directions, and the, and the, rim, the last four, they're diagonals. So it's kind of like, it's easier for me to write them down if I separate ones and twos, and also it's easier to copy it then. And then I have like four different, uh, they're basically rotational symmetry here. So we could actually even make it even more efficient if we wanted. But generally there's like four different um, types of uh, structures that as a, uh, if we are worm was digging uh, through through the rock, it would be fine if they're, they're, um, they're dig into a tile with that, uh, with that uh, signature. There is something that you might be um, confused by, and that's like, you see, you might be seeing those purple, I hope they're purple. Uh, oh my gosh, this is so difficult. The, you might be seeing those purple X's here. Um, I already implemented a feature here, or I'm thinking about a feature that we haven't implemented yet. And that feature is about um, these purple X's mean that this could be a wall or this could be free space. We don't really care. We don't really care either way. As long as you know the cardinal direction tile in between is an empty space, we don't care if the corner, uh, the ad adjacent corner spaces are wall or sp or free space. And that's something I figured out, you know, through like experience, through like looking at this, through thinking things through, um, just like basic by trial and error. This is not something that you can like math out. This is just something some, something I figured out. This is the kind of structure we're going to create. And as you can see, uh, if you look at the, oops, if you look at the signature of the corner tiles, you will see sometimes there is X's here. So we have not just like zeros and ones, but X. And X means, X means that we don't really care uh, if this space contains a one or zero. It's kind of like a, I call it a mask. We kind of mask out this part. We don't really care about this part. It's, it works either way. We ignore whatever is in here. Um, all of the combinations of ones and zeros in these spaces should, um, should be recognized as, as this, you know, this signature. So we kind of have to do add some additional functionality here. Not only do we have to have like a whole list of, um, of, um, of signatures that we check against, not just one signature as we have here. Like right now, we're just checking against one signature. We have to check against the whole list of signature. And also we have to add like this ability of mask out certain parts of our signature or be saying like, okay, we don't really care about these corner pieces as long as the center piece in here is a free space. <sighs> Long explanation. Okay, so how can we do that? Let's try to write this function that compares two things each other. Right now we're doing it like this very simple thing. We're just gonna get the signature and we're comparing with a single number. So how are we going to make it so that we're not just comparing a signature with a number, but actually like taking into account maybe some kind of mask. By the way, this mask we can also set up as a type of, um, uh, how do you call it? As a type, uh, we could also set it up as, um, as a bit, uh, as a binary number like here. So we, something that we could set up is, so let's, let's, let's take a, a specific example from here. So let's say this is, this is the first entry that I had here, 001, let's go, let's go ahead, 001, X11X. This is the, the signature that I want to check against. If this is true or false, if this, if this tile 
um, is equal to this signature or not. So we would have like the actual signature, which would be something like 1101 and then, you know, 0110. That would be a signature. And just it should like, it, you know, it, um, the check should ignore those zeros here. And then we have like a mask, which is going to be 0001001. Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. And this mask basically corresponds to the axis. Every time we have an X in our in our you know original template, we should have a one in the in the mask. So we're kind of like checking against two numbers. The, the signature we're checking against and a mask that ignores that that um, tells the the function which bits to ignore. This might be a bit complex, but don't worry. We we're gonna get through here. It's not it's not that difficult. So we're gonna go function. We're gonna call this bcomp binary comparison it's, that's what, what i had um, source is going to be our source number the number the signature of the tile that we're checking like whatever came out or, or maybe let's call it sig let's call it this the signature that we, that we're comparing against this is the signature that came out of get sig the tile that we that we're looking at then we're going to have a match this is the match that we're checking against you know like in our case this would be this this part here this is the thing that we're checking against just the raw numbers that we're checking against. And finally, we're going to have a mask. Now, the mask is going to be kind of like an um, optional kind of thing. So we can say like if um, mask, I'm going to go local mask. Uh, we're going to use a ternier here. Uh, equals um, mask um, and uh, mask or zero. I wonder if just like mask or zero. I think mask or zero works, right? I'm gonna keep it. Out. You let me know. I, I'm, I'm very like these these ternaries. I love them, but also they confuse me a lot. Something like this. So uh, if the mask, if there's nothing, there was no mask supplied, then the entire mask will be zero. Thus, not ignoring any like all of these um, uh, bits in the comparison will be valid, will be compared against each other. None of them will be left out. So if you think about this, how do we um, figure out, how do we compare them against each other? How, how do we make it so that they, they, uh, the mask is going to be left out? Because, you know, if, if it was just about comparing, it would be something like return, uh, um, re return sig equals match. That would be trivial. Then we probably wouldn't even need this function, right? Because that's what we're doing, we're doing here. We're gonna have we have a signature, I mean we're just comparing against a match. Sig equals match. Done. But now we want to bring in this mask, and with this mask, this should be kind of like ignore certain um, certain uh, certain bits. So certain bits should be like always equal, no matter what they're actually actually set to, or should come out as equal. And the e very easy solution for this is just like to be or in the mask into the signature, but also into the match. So we're gonna go be or sig uh, mask equals be or match mask. That will mean that um, wherever the mask has a zero, like in this case, whenever the mask has a zero, the resulting uh, number will just copy copy over the the um, the content of um, of the number that it was um, be or with. So it's, it, this would be like zero, ignore, 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 and here would be also like ignore, ignore. It will just copy the the numbers that we have here whenever here is a zero. Okay, but wherever there is a one, it will overwrite it and it will set it to one. It doesn't really care. Even if here there was one in here, the result would be still a one. So we'll just like completely ignore whatever was in, in this content, uh, overwrite basically every slot uh, with a one. And so that will be the result. And if we do both things with the signature, but also with a match, uh, then that means, you know, whenever there was a mask, there was always a one. So they will be equal in this spot, in, in this slot. I don't know if I'm making myself, I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear here. But anyways, like this is just basically like this, our little function here that makes sure that we're comparing two binary numbers with each other, m allowing for certain bits being um, being ignored. Okay, so um, 
yeah, let's test it maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I deleted everything here now. Okay, so let's just, just try some. Let's just let's just first of all try if if this is even working. Maybe it's not working, right? So um, let's go. Bcomp get sick xy comma and then like this little number here that we had here, right? Should it should look the same? It does look the same. Okay. So now um, let us maybe try to bring in a mask. So let's make it so, I'm not even sure what will happen. Let's make it so that diagonal numbers will be ignored. That it doesn't really care about diagonals. It doesn't really care if they're um, empty or full. So I'm not even sure what, what will be look like, what this will look like, but let's try this. So zero, zero, zero is for the cardinal directions because they should be, no, this, the function should care about, but it doesn't, shouldn't, doesn't, shouldn't, share, shouldn't care about the diagonals. Let's try this. Ooh, interesting. So now it kind of like takes the corner pieces with it. Oh, that's really fascinating. That's cool. So actually, this is exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do because we still it does, still doesn't give us a good good. Um, it still doesn't give us a good preview of where we're supposed to be carving, and yet uh, it kind of encourages us to carve into into those corner pieces to create those awkward diagonals. Ugh, ugh. Good. So now the only thing for us left to do is to take this this content of this. You don't see it if I put it up. That's, if this, as soon as the light is over, out, it's 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 gone. Maybe if you like like this, it's the contents of my book, my beautiful book, uh, and we put them put it in a huge array. Look, well, that's gonna be huge. It's gonna be five entries array, two arrays in fact. One array is gonna be about this the matches that we're looking for, and the other array is gonna be the corresponding. Um, masks. Okay, so I'm gonna do this real quick and probably will speed this up so uh, so you don't have to watch me typing this up. So now we are done and you can see um, yeah, we have like two arrays here that um, that we're comparing against each other. I'm gonna put those arrays actually here at the very beginning um, to the other arrays basically, so we can like use them from every every function. Uh, by the way, I just noticed uh, throw x and throw y, uh, throw dx and throw y are here up here. I don't like it. I think they should be here where we start a game. That seems more more like it. Seems more seems better. Good. So carve sig is the signatures we're looking for, and carve mask is the mask for each signature. You know, sometimes it's zero, but most of the time it's something. Okay. So now when we are generating stuff here in the, in the, our maze worm function, we're just gonna do a new function, and that function is gonna be. Um, can carve x y. Just will return whether a certain tile is okay to get carved or not. So um, if uh, not in, well, let's go like if in bounds x y. Then because we're not do going uh, for this if we're not in bounds anywhere, return false. If it's not in bounds, it's fine. Um, and then inside here is we're gonna go like for each. Uh, can we do for each here? No, we can't. So for i equals one um, to hashtag carve sick do. And then it's we're gonna do the B comp that we have had above here. We're gonna go through our array of like different signatures that are okay to get carved, and we're gonna do like a mass comparison between between the signature that we have and all of the other signatures. So um, something like this. By the way, we have to also do um, here local um, sig equals get sig uh, x y. We're grabbing the signature here. And then be if b comp sig, um, then carve sig. We're grabbing the the match, the signature that we're looking for at i, 
and then we're grabbing the mask. So if if this is if one of those doesn't match, so uh, wait, how does how does that work? So is is it? Yeah, if one of them has to match. So if um, this, the match goes through, then return true. Um, just one of them has to match. If none of these are a match, that means that is probably not, not carvable. Then, then it means that we should return a false, which means don't touch this wall. It seems to be like a wall that will create a breakthrough or something. All of the others are fine. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's try that. So let's do this now instead of the B comp here. Do, do, do. If can carve, let's try that. Ooh. Ooh. So you see, this wouldn't be great to start our worm because that mean that means our worm would actually dig into um, the edges of, of a room. That's not good. For, for the starter, I think we're just going to use tiles that are completely surrounded by uh, walls but if you continue carving this is great because it, it tells us for example now this is see as we're carving past the room it tells us eh let's not break this wall let's not, let's let's not break through to this room let's continue carving just downwards for example it always gives us like a good hint of where we can go how we can carve a maze if I just always bump against one of those uh, blue walls I'm sure to to create a nice maze. And now you can tell that now we would get stuck and this would be uh, the position for to stop this worm, to make this worm go away, to send this worm into retirement and start a new worm perhaps in this area to the right, uh, to the bottom right, where there's uh, a lot of really delicious, delicious uh, carving space. Maybe the worm could curve on the other side. You, know. you can tell that that you can now create mazes like this. This is it. This is our our, our idea here. So <laughs> somebody just subscribed while I'm doing. Hey, Dave Keen, welcome to the recording. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, uh, the microphone's a bit loud sometimes. Yeah. So these are kind of like. Um, one ability of us to really understand the structure of the level using those signatures. And this is like, like, like a very simple and kind of like not that complicated implementation. Later on, we're going to create much bigger uh, arrays of um, signatures and corresponding masks to really um, do a lot of interesting things. I think the most important application that a lot of people struggle with is like this thing I already talked about where you have a tile set and you have to find, you know, which tile uh, corresponds, you know, to this arrangement of walls and empty spaces, you know, where it's like you have multiple tiles that show you, you know, curving walls and, and corners and edges. And you have to pick which tile of wall curvature fits the structure of the wall and, and empty spaces. And you can use exactly this kind of thing, this, this um, the signature and, and um, masks to uh, f uh, quickly, uh, with very little code, kind of like scan through the entire map and, and compare it against different masks and, and find the numbers that correspond to the right uh, tile that corresponds to this specific structure. Long explanation. Okay, so this was, um, I'm going to make a stop here. This was like a very important part of this, this structure comparison thing. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to actually start writing our worm uh, digging function. We're going to actually make our worm work. We have all of the pieces that we need and we can now finally start carving. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.